Hey guys, I get a lot of questions on my Epson EcoTank 8550 conversion. Uh, thought I'd show a few things, kind of what I did, how it works. Um, it's already done, so I'm not going to show you the whole process of assembling it, but at least thought for you that are uh, asking, you kind of see what's going on. So, just a second, and we'll uh, loop that in. So this is my converted printer. A few moving parts going on here. We'll start with the exit tray. Pretty simple. Uh, this is just a standard floor tile, 12 by 24. You get your hardware store. This is a glossy top, paper film slides across pretty easy. I added another four or five inches here. This is just a, a sign blank, like a yard sign. I print a lot of those on different printers. So uh, it bought me just enough distance here that I can run a three and a half, four foot if I really need to stretch it out. A print and this will hold to keep the film from falling off. So um, I should just ran a cleaning cycle, I'm getting ready to run some prints here in a minute. So uh, that one's just about perfect. So uh, a few things I use cleaning um, almost daily, if not daily, but uh, syringe, Amazon, pretty easy. Just a uh, open fill fill needle. Uh, cleaning solution. The bottle is, does not have the same stuff it came with. I bought this, which was very expensive, and then I. I've since learned to make my own solutions with my own own mixture that works i think actually better and significantly cheaper to make so and then i buy these by the hundreds great for cleaning up the print head um, the different pieces inside the printer that get dirty awesome for that capping station um, i also use it on the white ink here and i'll explain that to you uh, this is my cess system um, white does have a mixing this runs, I have it set to run for about 30 or 45 seconds. I don't remember top of my head, about every 10 minutes. So it mixes pretty much continuously all the time. Keeps that white ink moving. It is not perfect. You do still have to shake this thing uh, every so often just to really keep the stubborn stuff from settling on the bottom because it definitely can. Um, that's one of the reasons I have these as well. This will reach in there. You can kind of stir up the bottom. Make sure any of the, the separated ink you can stir back up and get it off the, off the floor of the, the container here. I also dump this entire thing probably about once a month or so just in a separate container temporarily. Clean this all the way out back to like brand new. Um, flush the lines um, all the way out. Get them clear again just to really give it a good cleaning. Kind of like an oil change type of thing. That helps that day-to-day -day maintenance. Uh, the rest of the colors are pretty easy going. Don't have any problems out of any of those. Um, each of these tanks does an ink cartridge or ink line, except for the white, which has two. And it's just like a ribbon here. Came with the kit. I bought the kit. The entire SIS system I bought off Ali AliExpress for, oh, about 80 bucks or so U.S. Uh, shipped. Took three to four weeks to get here. Well worth it, though. Um, but they just run this table or... Um, tubing runs into where the carts used to be. I removed the carts, all of them. Um, mainly took them all out and then ran them inside there just for convenience. So it all runs in. You kind of see there where they're kind of running through the inside there. Um, they connect right here. And then when the original carts are in there, uh, the tubing connects to the carts. Um, I don't have any with me close by. Um, actually, let's see if I can find some here. Hang on. Um, yeah, we have an old one here. So this is out. This is one of the out of a different converted printer. Uh, so that right there, the tubes connect to that, and you can. Where's it at? I'm trying to do this blind. There. So you, when you pull the ink line off of that, all you do is use the little, they have a, they come, these come with little splice connectors, connect it in there, each one of those line it up with the respective hose that you're going to use. Uh, mine, both black and gray, or I'm sorry, that was wrong. The print black, photo black, and the gray have my white lines in them. Uh, so I just connected that way pretty easy. You just have to take this this apart, um, which does take a little bit of effort. This video, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Just know that it, it, that's how I did mine. Uh, maintenance box. I took the guts out of the maintenance box just because it got really annoying. So 
Uh, this is just a single line. It connects over the nipple that comes out to connect into the maintenance box. It's just slide right over that. And then that runs to there. Coffee can, nice soft lid, poked a hole, dropped the line in there. Easy to carry, easy to dump out. Simple as that. So that is my actual waste tank now. Um, you do have to reset this thing. The machine thinks it is still there as normal. So every once in a while, and actually just today I had to do it, um, I had to hit this on the chip that's on the bottom side of this. It resets it, and it tells the printer that the, ink cart, the maintenance tank is empty again. So I haven't taken this one out for some time. I just pop it out every, whenever it yells at you and reset it. Uh, print head cleaning is pretty easy. Um, I will run a standard print cycle. Oh, I just did this. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it again. So just every once in a while, yeah, I'll go it through until I printer. These are all full. And it's full. We're good. Um, I'll run a print head cleaning and hit start. And as soon as the print head moves here, even just a little bit. So right now it's running an automatic movement here. But once it starts to move, unplug the machine. That, that frees the print head up. I'll slide it over. Take this, fill it with cleaning solution. Put it in the capping station underneath this thing. And slide it back over and let the print head sit for a second. Uh, and then I'll get a paper towel. Um, a keto box right here. I'll fold that up and then uh, squirt some of the cleaning solution on the paper towel. Put it in here, like lay it, lay it in here to where it's you know inch, two inches wide, basically enough that when you put it right here, you can slide the print head over it and then kind of shoe shine it on the bottom of it. And that's how I'll clean the print head. Uh, daily, every couple days, whatever he's done. Um, sometimes you can get by with just running a, a cleaning sample or two and you're good. Sometimes it clogs up the white and you have to go through and clean the whole thing. So, uh, Exit tray. I removed parts of it and used some of the same sign blanks right here. Uh, it just allows me to use a longer print. I can actually run, I think I've done up to four and a half feet on a single run now, uh, print-wise, and it does work. Uh, you just have to make sure your ink is full and it'll, it'll go. So, um, this bottle you might notice out here for me it's convenient that the end of the power cord back there will fit right in the tip of that so um oh heat press is hot uh so we'll do that and it'll just hold it keep me from having to chase it around all the time and then this also serves the purpose of you can drop the lid down put this right here i can drop film in there to feed in normal and then this will just, it'll just curl the film up right here and this just holds it in place. So I don't have to necessarily fight it to go all the way up and over the top of this. So, um, timer, sis, external waste, fancy bottle to hold the thing, the power cord, exit tray, I can put the extension on there. And the maintenance is not bad. Um, you have to stay on it. You need to at least run a print cycle, even just to clean it uh, daily, if at all possible. If it's going to be more than, uh, I would say, three to four days that you're not going to be printing, um, you're going to have to soak that head pretty well and then run a power clean, which in the settings is right here. And then this, when you hit this button, it's going to have a bunch of disclaimers warning you about different things. Uh, it uses a ton of ink for the normal cartridges for this. It's not that much. It's no worse than if you're going to print a couple prints for the day anyways. But especially the white, it'll pull that white through and really, generally speaking, get all the clogs out that might be in there as long as you're taking care of that print head. So uh, anytime you've got a white issue for printing, especially that, that, uh, that top layer where you're trying to make it brighter, it is usually one of those that ink inside the printer, the white is clogged somewhere. So those of you that ask a lot of questions about that, that's usually what it is. It just got a clog. So um, a lot of other tip, if you're going on vacation for more than, you know, a few, three, four days, highly, highly recommend flushing those white lines. It takes five minutes. Um, all you have to do, remove this. You need to unlock the print head so you can slide it over. You can take this cover off. 
you can just simply, I usually put a paper towel or two around this mess here. Once this lid's off, pull each white line and then just, I just use this to push the white back into the cis. And once that's clear, pull these off, put them in the waste tank, and then just shove a couple syringes full of cleaner through to make sure it's all clean. And then that will really help from keeping this thing from getting clogged up. Uh, simple as that. And then just make sure you soak that front head pretty good and run some ink through it when you can. So, but this is my 8550 conversion. Been running this one for about a year. Um, this the last three days, probably 200, 300 shirts. Uh, it keeps up. So this is it. Again, this is not a video to show you necessarily how to convert it, but this is my conversion and what, what I did to it to make things work. So there you go, guys. Good luck to you and hope your DTF printing goes well.